Hi everyone, it's Jessica. Thank you for being with me here today. Boy, do I have a challenge for you for this month's mystery envelope challenge sent out by my friend Katie Weeks. Here you can see the papers and the little zip, zip strip that she has sent us from the Home for Christmas paper collection. And her rule is, is that we have to find a one sheet wonder pattern and create our project with that. She did give a couple of ideas of places to find something like that. Um, and honestly, I have not done a one sheet wonder before, so this was really quite challenging for me. I did originally try starting with a card. I used some other papers from the ones that she sent me just so I could practice first. I was not feeling it. And so instead, I turned to a one sheet wonder pattern that made a mini album. Now I did grab a piece of black cardstock here and I'm going to basically use that as my one sheet um, for the wonder of the creation of this mini album. And then I will use the papers that she sent me as well as some other papers from that same collection to do all of my decorating. Now this pattern comes from Pinterest and I will link that down below, but the name of the lady who put it together is Einit Kessler and I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. At the beginning, it's actually quite simple. You are going to score your 12 by 12 paper at the four inch and the eight inch mark. So basically you're creating a grid of nine squares. So at four and eight, and you're gonna do that in both directions on your paper. So you have that three by three grid. Now, um, Einit Kessler did also mention on Pinterest that it would actually work really well to then flip your paper over and repeat that same scoring process because that's really going to break those paper fibers down and make your paper a little bit more pliable because it's going to be doing a lot of like flipping, flipping and opening and like moving in a bunch of different directions when you put it together. And so this just helps to break that paper down a little bit more. Um, and so I'm just repeating again at the four and the eight with my um, scoring blade here on my trimmer. And then once I have done that, then I am ready to cut a couple of key parts of it. So I, again, will link her Pinterest post down below. She also has a video embedded in that post and she does a fabulous job kind of doing a tutorial to show this. So if at any point I leave you lost, please feel free to check that out. Okay, so if we have our paper sitting here like this, we wanna take a look at that top middle square in our grid, and we are going to cut a backwards L shape out of it. So I'm going to now pull in my trimmer that's got the actual blade, cutting blade in it, um, and I'm going to line my paper up at the four inch mark so that I can get the one side of that backward L. And I'm gonna very carefully come down and I will use that ruler over there to the side of my blade just to kind of know exactly how far to come down. Um, so there's the first cut. And then I will spin my paper and again, line it up at the four and just kind of see where my blade is and carefully place it down and then make the second cut for the bottom part of the L. So um, she did say that it would help to actually kind of scooch your paper over just the tiniest little smidge, maybe even a sixteenth of an inch, and cut it again so that you're really trimming away just the barest little edge of paper when you do these cuts. You can see here that I'm going to pull that tiny little strip out. And again, as we start to fold things, I did find that that was really helpful because there's a lot of bulk, right? This is cardstock and you're gonna fold it up into like essentially a four by four square. And so just kind of cutting that little strip out when you make your cut, it is very helpful. Um, and so I will go back and do that on the other side um, so that I can just, again, lining it up um, and I'm just, I'm barely cutting it uh, so that it makes like the tiniest little strip of extra paper that I can pull off of this four by four square. Now you could also maybe just do this with your scissors. Um, you know, I was just was very careful here. And again, just kind of pulling out that tiny little strip. And of course it was so tiny that my blade didn't really like it. I did have to use my scissors to clean it up just a little bit. And this is a piece of white core cardstock. So later on, you're gonna see where I take a foam tool to ink distress all of the edges. So I'll hide all of these like messy cuts later, um, but I do want to make sure that I give myself some room for all of those folds. 
Okay, so that's the first part. So again, what I found easiest is just after doing that, I keep putting it back in the same um, orientation just to kind of check myself on my guide. So now we've got that backwards L cut out of that top, um, that middle square in the top third. Okay, so next we wanna make a cut down here. So we are going to come down to, it's eight inches down now. Um, and we're gonna do just that bottom line right there. Um, and come in towards the center. Again, stop, be very careful watching your measurements on your, um, on your tool. And then I didn't cut that extra little slit here if I remember correctly, but later I did end up going back and kind of putting it in because I realized that that was actually a very helpful tip and something that needed to be done. Okay, so again, I'm gonna set it back out so that it's helpful for me and hopefully for you. So we've got that backwards L, we've got this cut down here um, on that middle far right square. The next one we wanna do is we're just basically gonna jump that middle square and we're gonna do that same line only on the other side. So again, kind of putting it so that now I've got it on the four inch mark and I'll put a little slit there coming in towards the center. So we've got our backwards L at the top and then um, a line at the right and a line at the bottom in that bottom row. Okay, and that should be it, I believe, for the cutting. Now we are just ready to do some folding. So we're gonna take this little um, backwards L flap that we have made and we're gonna fold it over towards the right. Um, it's helpful to have a, a bone folder or something like that to really crease that down. Um, and then you could use liquid glue or double-sided adhesive, or I just use my tape runner actually. Um, and you're gonna put a little bit of adhesive on the top and the bottom of that far right corner. So that way you have formed a pocket there where you have folded that over. And again, just use a bone folder to really burnish that down. Okay, so now we have one pocket made and we will cut a little finger notch in there later, but we're just kind of getting some of the basics uh, done here first. I did like to use my bone folder just to make sure I didn't get adhesive too far in um, and that it could open up. Now we're gonna fold that pocket down towards the bottom, again, giving it a good, nice crease. And that part is there, okay? And then um, at this point, I'm gonna kind of flip that up, I believe, and get it out of the way. Um, we're gonna take that bottom, so we fold it over to the right, yep, and then this one comes down. I really had to kind of walk myself through very slowly using her directions, um, but once I got into it, I found that it was quite simple. Okay, so now we're gonna work with these two little bottom flaps down here. Now I wanna take that one on the far right side and just that bottom square, that bottom four inch square in our grid, we're gonna line it up at one inch in the scoreboard um, or on your trimmer with your scoring blade and we're gonna put a little score line at the one inch mark. So then we'll fold that flap over towards the left and here's about where I can see, yep, I, you know, I didn't cut that extra little tiny sliver out and I can see that it's gonna be an issue, so I'm gonna line things back up and, and kind of trim that out. So again, I recommend not skipping that step like I did, um, and when you do make your cuts in this to just kind of give yourself a little bit of room for those folds to happen. Um, again, scissors might be an easy way to go about doing that, um, or you know, clean it up like I did here. Okay. So let's get back to, I keep returning for my own sake, returning back to that same orientation. Okay, so this flips over to the left um, and we're going to really crease that down. And then we're gonna take where we put that little one inch score line and we're gonna fold that back. We will end up with a double pocket here. So we'll have the one little pocket coming in this way and another tiny little pocket coming in that way. So we'll put a tiny little bit of adhesive here and here, um, flip that back over. So that's our little mini pocket. And then you guessed it, we're gonna put some adhesive there and there and flip back that back over for the second pocket, okay. So that looks a little weird right now, but it is really cute once it's all decorated up and it has some things stuck into it. Okay, and again, if you prefer liquid glue or double-sided adhesive, that would be fine. I did kind of go back and touch up a few little spots with my liquid glue later if I felt like it was not sticking very well. Um, but you know, whatever, whatever makes you happy. Okay, now let's take that other little flap that we have cut. We're gonna fold that in towards the middle 
Again, give it a good crease there. And now we're gonna take that one last one that is kind of hanging out by itself up in the top, um, and we are going to fold that one down. So again, we've done this so far. Now our last piece is bringing this and folding it down. Um, and again, giving it a little crease, okay? And then now it's kind of, um, we're just gonna start folding some things toward the back um, as we like get into our, our small square. Um, we're gonna make one more pocket here so that part from the top we fold it down, we're going to put a little bit of adhesive in that, oh, you know what, I've been saying backwards all this whole time and that was not backwards. <laughs> that L was backwards right there. Oh my goodness, you guys must think that I have lost my mind. Okay, so now we're gonna start folding things like over towards the middle and then also backwards towards the middle. So again, the goal is just to kind of end up folding and folding this little album so that we have a four by four square. And honestly, by the time I was done putting all of my papers and embellishments on and I'd folded it, so many different ways. I felt like I kept folding it up in different, uh, like different steps to make it end up in that four by four square. So since we did uh, score our paper on both sides, it is pretty pliable. You can kind of make this work however it just sort of naturally finds itself coming down to this uh, moment right here. Now I mentioned earlier that I did originally try to do a one sheet wonder for cards, um, which was brand new to me. And I just, I really wasn't feeling it because usually when I design my cards, I base it around the stamp set that I want to use. And I felt like this was going in a backwards direction and it was really, um, it just wasn't creatively working for me. And that's why I thought, you know what, I, I admire mini albums and I think they're super adorable, but I don't make them very often. And so I'm gonna give that a try instead. Now, my thought is, is that when I'm all done with this, I could either give it as a gift to my mother or my mother-in-law as a little Christmas present, or um, I, again, I kind of admire uh, the December daily albums that a lot of people create, and I've never done that. It's a little intimidating to me because I'm like, I don't know if I have that many pictures and if I would remember to take pictures in December. So I thought that this mini album might be a cute way to kind of practice that. Um, maybe this December I will attempt to fill this in with some different pictures and kind of see how it goes. And if maybe, you know, in, in later years, I would want to venture into a true December daily album. So I'm just using the papers that Katie sent me as well as some other papers that I have from this same Home for Christmas collection from Close to My Heart. Um, I am cutting everything at three and seven eighths since we have four inch squares on our mini album. And that way there's just, again, room for folding and also it makes that nice little black frame all the way around the papers. I will end up needing to cut just a few more, but I found that this really didn't take a lot of pattern paper to decorate. So what a great way to use up some scraps that you might have left over from a paper collection. Okay, so I do um, take my ink foam blending tool and I add some black ink to all of my papers. And then I also go around the black cardstock itself just to hide that white core and then uh, anywhere that I had kind of been like pushing and creasing it and, and making that core appear. Okay, now for the pocket parts that we have made, I am using a one inch circle punch just to kind of cut a little thumb notch and make it easier to grab what is inside. I thought I was being smart by cutting it out of my pattern paper first, adhering that down to the first pocket. And I thought, oh, what I will do is I will just then do that for the back side of the pocket as well with my other piece of pattern paper. And then I will come back in with my hole punch and I can line it up because I'll already be able to see where that first hole is and then everything will match up perfectly. That's what I thought was gonna be a really smart idea. But what I found when I went to do this, you'll see this here, I get it all lined up and it is way too much paper. I could not get my hole punch to go all the way through. So I did have to, I cut most of it and then I had to come in with my scissors a little bit and kind of finagle the rest of it out. Um, but I'll do the same thing here. Just use that one inch hole punch to cut a little notch and then I'll glue it down. And then this time, rather than putting my pattern piece on the back first, I did just attempt to cut uh, with the hole punch with the two pieces of cardstock, but it still didn't work. So um, maybe one thing that I've learned from this is to maybe cut those, those pieces there before I actually glue the flaps together to form the pocket. Um, I think that might be a little bit easier. So 
Okay, and then now I just have like a couple of tiny little scraps left of paper from, you know, my own paper that I had pulled out and the things that Katie gave me. And I just, I just kind of like cut it up and I've got like some zip strips there. She sent one. I have one off my paper. Um, I did pull a few tiny stickers um, to just stick on for embellishments. And then I'm just using my photo place card holders here on my two by twos. You can see I left a little bit of space um, with no adhesive so that way I could slide my picture in there later. And then I used my tags and tabs thin cuts here and then also my fancy stitch brackets to cut out a little journaling spot and then also two tags out of pine ink. And then I did edge distress those tags uh, with a little sanding tool just to reveal that white core. So my thought was I would put the little journaling one here in that little tiny mini pocket that we made and then maybe put like some of the tags in the bigger pocket on the other side or coming out of those uh, thumb notch pockets that we made. I think that this would be cute, this little um, gingham zip strip that Katie sent. I did cut two itty bitty little pieces and put it on either side of my photo placeholder there, but I still have this piece here that will fit perfectly um, over that little tiny pocket. And then, yeah, like I said, this is just a place to start grabbing, like, what do you have left for paper scraps um, or stickers or embellishments that you create that you can just tuck in and use to decorate those squares? So speaking of scraps, I had the tiniest little bit of ribbon left from the white and gold ribbon that Close to My Heart used to sell. And I'm like, that is perfect. I can make that work on two of my tags. And so I just put a little bit of that ribbon through and then I tied it with some white twine, which is a trick that I've learned from Erin Jacobson. I love the way that that looks. So I've got two different tags here and I'm not sure yet what I will do with them. Maybe I'll put like a tiny photo on them or do journaling or maybe a combination of both, one on the front, one on the back. I really at this point kind of thought maybe I will leave some of this a little bit undecorated with no like titles, if you will, um, or too many journal lines or things like that, or even like putting the photo place card holders down because I thought, well, once I take my pictures, I might have a better idea of exactly how I want to finish assembling all of this together. So you can see here, I've just got some bigger spaces that are left open and blank um, so that I can make it work for my photos once I have them. Like maybe I'll put a three by three here or trim down a three by four and put that there instead. So again, I just kind of gave myself some room to build on it once I actually you know, experience December and take some pictures. Um, here's where I thought, well, maybe I should put another sticker down, but then I'm like, nope, nope, I'm just, I'm gonna wait on all that. So, and then that way too, if I have like a little title or something that I wanna put in there, I can do whatever is relevant to the photos, but it just kind of folds up um, and then there, yeah. So that's the idea. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, this was a first for me. And so I feel um, a little awkward trying to be the one to teach it when this was my first attempt at doing it. But um, if you have any questions, please make sure you leave them in the comments down below. And I will do my best to help you out on your journey of making a little one sheet wonder mini album. It was a lot of fun and I was really impressed with how little papers and you know scraps I was able to use to put it together. Um, so today is the mystery envelope challenge day that my friends and I do. And like I said, Katie Week sent out this month's envelope. All the other ladies are creating with the same rules and the same pieces that she sent. And we don't know what we are all making. So we all get surprised on the 25th of the month when we get to see all the videos that are released. I will leave links to the other ladies' videos in the description box down below. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I hope you've enjoyed. Happy crafting. See you next time. Bye.